All right, now I want to give another example of a continuous random variable. So we say that a random variable, I want to talk about a random variable which is uniformly distributed on an interval, an open interval, or it could be a closed interval, or we could just easily think A, B. Because, of course, as we talked about last time, the probability of getting any point, any given point, is zero. So adding a point in or taking a point away doesn't matter. So the idea, though, is, is that we want to look at some interval A, B, and we want to say that the probability of getting any point in here is equally likely. Or since any point is probably zero, we really want to say that if I take a little tiny interval, the probability of landing in this interval doesn't change as I move it around inside this bigger interval. Well, if that's true, then the density, the PDF function, must be just constant over this interval, since to get the probability of being in any little interval, I'm going to integrate this function against it. And if this is not the little interval i is not going to change as I move it around, this should be constant. Because, of course, the probability of being in x in i will just be the integral of i of my PDF x dx. Now, the only thing to figure out then is what's the value here? The whole thing has to integrate to 1. So if the base is b minus a, the height had better be 1 over b minus a. So we find that f of x, so x is uniform on the interval a, b, if it has pdf f of x equal to 1 over b minus a, for x in the interval a, b, and 0 for x not, that's what that means, in the interval a, b. Okay, so that's the PDF for the uniform distribution on the interval. Now, as just an exercise, let's go ahead and try to calculate some things for this. Let's calculate the expected value of x. Well, that's the integral from minus infinity to infinity of little x times the PDF of x, which we are again calling x. Now, since this is only positive on the interval non-zero on the interval zero, I mean a, b, we can restrict this interval to a, b, then we have little x, and now I'm going to go ahead and put in what the PDF is on that interval, b minus a, dx, and so I pull out this constant, integrate up x, which is x squared over 2, and I get this as x squared over 2 times b minus a, evaluated from a to b. And so that's d squared minus a squared over 2 b minus a. Since the top factors into b plus a, b minus a, I can cancel one factor, and we're left with d plus a over 2, which is what we knew it had to be. Right? And it makes sense that if I'm picking a point uniformly, the expected value is the mean, the center value, the average value of this interval. Similarly, we can do another calculation, which I'll do right up here of the variance, so the variance of x, well, that's the expected value of x squared, just like before, just like in the other cases we thought about, so mean squared, so now we need to do a little quick calculation of the expected value of x squared, and we can do that, that's the integral from a to b of x squared, b minus a, dx, which is just x, which is b cubed minus a cubed over 3, that's, I've done this integral, which is x squared over 3, times this factor, 1 minus b a. So that means that the whole variance is b cubed minus a cubed over 3, over 3 times b minus a, and Maybe you can start canceling things if you want to, but let's just go ahead and write the whole thing out. It's b plus a squared over 2 over 4. Because that's the 2 squared for the mean. All right, so that's a bit complicated, and we could sit and simplify that. But in, before we do that, let's actually see what these values are in a specific case. And then use that instead to calculate it. So I, as an exercise, you should go ahead and do the algebra and simplify this expression for the variance. But as an exercise, let's let u be uniform 0, 1. So that means that the expected value of u is, well, it's b minus a, so b and b plus a over 2, which in this case is 1 plus 0 over 2, which is 1 half. And now if we see what the variance of u is, well, we plug in 0 for all the a's and 1 for all the b's, 
So this is one-third minus one-fourth, which is one-third minus a fourth, which is one-twelfth. So the variance of u is one-twelfth. Now how is that useful for simplifying this without having to work too hard? Well, I claim that x equal to a plus b minus a times u is actually distributed uniform a b. If if u is distributed uniform 0, 1. So I've built a uniform a, b out of a uniform 0, 1. Look, if u is 0, this thing is 0 and we get a. If u is 1, I get b minus a plus a, which is just b. So clearly the range is a, b. And because this is uniform, if you calculate, you'll, you'll see in a second that it's, it's just uniform over the whole interval as it has to be. Right? The number doesn't change over the interval if you look at the density function. And we'll talk about change of variables soon enough, and you'll see how to do that more carefully. But let's use this right now. So now if I calculate the expected value of A, let's make sure we get the right answer. That's A plus B minus A expected value of U, which we saw was 1 half. So that's A plus B minus A over 2, which is exactly B plus A over 2. Now, what about the variance? Well, adding something to a variance, so this is a variance of a plus b minus a times u. Adding a constant to a variance doesn't change it, so that's the same as the variance of b minus a u. And if there's a constant in front, I can pull it out by squaring it for a variance. The variance of u. Now, what is the variance of u? The variance of u we just calculated was 1 12th. So this whole expression has to simplify to b minus a squared over 112. Alright? And that shows that somehow being a little bit smart and recognizing a random variable that you know well in a more complicated random variable will let you calculate things without having to go through and do horrible algebra.